Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations, and today I want to talk to you about the benefits of being lightweight. Now, you might look at me and say, who are you to talk to me about being lightweight? And it's a valid concern. But in particular, I want to talk to you about vehicles. So be they rock crawlers, ultra four cars, overlanders, there are advantages to keeping your vehicle light. And we're going to talk about those today and specifically about this case in point behind me. You may recall I did a video with my Ford truck about 37s versus 40s, and weight played a big factor in that video with regards to rotating mass. That truck is actually the inspiration for building this tracker that's here behind me. My Ford truck has all the components that people say you need in order to be a legit rock crawler. One tons, a V8, 40 inch Nitto trail grapplers. Now, I'm not saying those things aren't great, but this tracker will eat its lunch. And a big reason is that this vehicle is sub 3,000 pounds. The Ford weighs 6,900 pounds. So even though this has a four cylinder, it's got Toyota based axles and 37 inch Nitto trail grapplers on it, it'll still beat the Ford any day of the week. Specifically, I built this vehicle to be lightweight. My Jeep and my Toyota pickup both have 37 inch tires, half ton axles. They weigh about 4,500 pounds each. Now this vehicle weighs 2,900 pounds. It's got the same size tires, the same basic axles, the same basic wheelbase, and it's significantly more capable, mainly because of the weight. There's a lot of other factors that we'll get into here today, but weight is a big one. And we'll talk about things from this vehicle you can apply to your own vehicle if you have a rock crawler. When I built this, I realized just how few people realize how much their vehicles weigh. So I posted up on social media when the tracker was done and asked people, what do you think this weighs? And I got guesses ranging from 1,200 pounds all the way up to 10,000 pounds. So an order of magnitude, it ran the gamut. It weighs 2,900 pounds, which is very light. There were also people who said, oh yeah, I have a TJ with one tons and 40s and it weighs sub 3,000 pounds. I will tell you that they are wrong. They just haven't had it on the scale. So take your vehicle, go to a truck stop. You can run it over the scales. It costs about 10 bucks. You'll have an example of what your vehicle weighs. And it's an important thing to consider. So I've done that with every vehicle I own. This I actually use corner scales on to weigh, but it's a big investment. If you're not building race cars, it's probably not something you're going to have in your repertoire. But maybe a friend does and you can weigh them. So rolling stock consists of 37 inch Nitto trail grapplers on forged method wheels, which honestly aren't the lightest tire out there. But if there's one place you want weight, it's in the tires. So when I go to the King of the Hammers and I pre-run all the rocks in the tracker, I remove the doors, I leave the spare back at camp, and it's never been an issue. I've never had a flat. So a lighter tire is inherently gonna have a thinner sidewall and be weaker. These forge wheels actually weigh six pounds less per corner than a cast wheel. The trade-off is they cost three times as much for a forge wheel. I bought these used, they were race takeoff, so I got a pretty good price on them and they're super strong. For years, I did work on Ultimate Adventure and over the 20 year span, there's been four different tire manufacturers that have sponsored that event, including Nitto. They're the only one who never had a tire failure on the event, which I think is pretty telling. They make a really tough tire so you can leave your spare back at camp. I trailer this most places, so even though it's legally registered and plated, I don't carry a ton of gear with me because I just have to limp back to the trailer, which is another way you can save weight. Let's talk specifically about some components on this tracker that make it so lightweight. The axles are Toyota based. They only weigh around 500 pounds. For comparison, Super Duty axles weigh more like 800 pounds, almost twice as much. These axles have been beefed up, they use Diamond fabricated housings. They are Toyota based, so they use electric lockers in them. RCV front axle shafts that are super strong. It's got Hellfire knuckles in the front and Spider Tracks disc brakes. So the tracker was built by Jesse Haynes Fabrication, and the Spider Tracks brakes are one thing Jesse recommended. They actually shed 40 pounds per axle. These brakes only weigh 10 pounds per corner, and they have great performance too because they use a big 14 inch rotor. It uses an aluminum hat to keep it light and a Willwood drag race caliper, which provides great braking and is lightweight. So there's very few compromises there other than the cost.
Other parts on the tracker that are super lightweight. I have a UTV winch that's rated for 3,500 pounds, which when you have a sub 3,000 pound vehicle is plenty. And that winch weighs a quarter as much as a typical eight, nine, 10,000 pound winch you would use. So big weight savings and they're relatively inexpensive as well. It's important to keep the entire vehicle in mind if you wanna build something light. We started with a four cylinder engine and the original transmission, which don't overtax the rest of the drivetrain. So you don't need huge axles, which then limit ground clearance. So you need huge tires and then you need a bigger engine. And there's this vicious cycle where you end up with something like my Ford that weighs almost 7,000 pounds. The tracker uses heat treated chromoly links that are only 120 wall on the lowers and 095 on the uppers with three quarter inch rod ends on the upper links and seven eighths rod ends on the lower links. That might not mean much to you, but consider that typical rock crawlers use two inch 250 wall tubing with inch and a quarter rod ends, which will admittedly never break, but it's such overkill and they weigh dramatically more than what the tracker's control arms weigh. Jesse Haynes wanted to use a Samurai transfer case for this vehicle. And the reason being is you can gear them all the way down to 6.4 to one in low range. They're actually lower than one to one in high range, which acts as an underdrive with the, which the tracker needs on the pavement. And these transfer cases weigh under 50 pounds. For consideration, an Atlas, which is the benchmark for transfer cases, weigh around 130 pounds. And again, are significantly stronger than the Samurai transfer case, but at what cost? It weighs twice as much. We specified all the components to be small and lightweight and they're well matched to each other. Now, while you might not be building a lightweight rock crawler from scratch, there are plenty of ideas off the tracker that you can apply to your own project. The entire interior of the tracker was gutted and replaced with sheet metal from CR Fabrication. It actually has razor seats for Mastercraft in it. It's got autometer gauges in the aluminum dash and is very minimalist. Now that's good on the trail and it keeps it light. I'll admit the thing is loud on the road and not something you wanna drive every day. The tracker uses 12 inch travel, two and a half inch diameter ADS air shocks on them. And I will confess, this is a compromise. They don't ride great on rough roads. When I'm leaving the Rubicon and I'm on those cobbled rocks on the way out on the way to Lake Tahoe, you have to go pretty slow in the tracker. I just air down the Nitto trail grapplers and they act as the suspension. Coilovers would be better in that regard, but they weigh over twice as much compared to an air shock, which acts as both the spring and the shock all in one. So these were chosen specifically for rock crawling to make the vehicle light and capable. Rock crawlers aren't the only ones who can benefit from light weight. They have applications to overlanding as well. The most popular vehicle platform is the Toyota Tacoma, and I often see them overloaded. If you look at the specs, the curb weight from a Tacoma compared to the gross vehicle weight, there's only an 1,155 pound difference between the two. You put five guys my size in a double cab Tacoma and you've reached the GVW. That's even before you've added any aftermarket parts. So when you consider steel bumpers, winches, rock sliders, rooftop tents, bigger tires and wheels, all these components contribute to a heavier vehicle. And that taxes not only the engine, but the rest of the drivetrain as well, and the suspension. Performance is hindered. So consider, do you need a 120 pound rooftop tent or will a three pound ground tent do just as well for you? If you apply this thinking to every purchase you make, you have the opportunity to keep your vehicle lighter and it'll perform better. And I'm not saying don't modify your vehicle, but consider an aluminum front bumper instead of a steel front bumper. Consider adding synthetic winch line to your winch in order to save about 10 pounds off the front end of the vehicle where the suspension has to control all that movement. My Ram weighs over 10,000 pounds and so it's not the most svelte overlander, but I started with a one ton truck. So the chassis has no problem controlling all of that weight. One issue I see people bringing up often with regards to Tacomas being overloaded is add a turbocharger, put in a Cummins crate motor. 
Those are good ideas in order to get more horsepower, but really power is the least of your concerns if you've overloaded your vehicle. You need to be concerned about chassis fatigue, if you have a half ton axle or smaller that's semi float and uses a small ring and pinion, those parts are gonna be stressed. They're going to fail more. The brakes, you have to stop all this extra weight. Your braking distances are going to increase. And these are considerations that you should keep in mind anytime you're modifying your vehicle. If you wanna see more details about the tracker, go to the Harry Situations YouTube channel. All Train Family and I made a video in great detail about every aspect of this vehicle. While I'm not suggesting that weight is the only consideration in modifying your vehicle, it should be a consideration. And you don't even have to always pay more money in order to get something that's lighter weight. So keep it in mind and you'll have a better performing vehicle that gets better fuel mileage and is more capable on the trail. Disagree? Did I forget something? Comment below and let us know what you think. Be sure to check back next month when we do a walk around with my friend Jason Roach's YJ that's built to the hilt with one ton axles, coilovers, and 40 inch Nitto Trail Grappler tires.